Hey, what's up? It's your girl Tamara, aka a girl from Harlem. What's up, guys? This is Ray Daniels, aka the Culture Referee. Welcome to the God, Goats and Underdog Show, aka the God Show. Let's get it. All right. So, a lot of things have been going on since we last spoke, which was yesterday. But <laughs> so, let's see. Where should we start? Oh, Cardi B has been arguing on the internet with the Barb's, with Nikki's fans. Uh huh. And it's been going crazy. So, I want to start with like. As a superstar now, because Cardi is like big up there, when do you, what is your ability to ignore the trolls? Like, how do you deal with internet trolls and things like that? When should you respond? Like, what would be your advice? Um, I would say to all celebrities, one of the laws of power is you cannot win people over with words, only actions. So stop arguing with people using words. You can make all the sense in the world and they're still gonna say something dumb or something that's gonna contradict it. Every yin that's a yang. I don't care if you're talking about how to better the world and everything else, somebody's gonna find a way to make you the bad person. So I would say to Cardi B, stop. You cannot win. I know it makes sense to you. I know you're right, you are right. But why are you arguing with people who faces you can't see? And she does it all the time. Yeah, but I, and I know it's I know it's frustrating, but it's kind of like it's kind of like you prayed to be Cardi B. Now you are. That comes with the territory. Haters can't address them all. They only hating on you because you winning. So it's an honor that they hating on you. Read if nobody's hating on you, then you ain't doing nothing right. Um, so another thing I wanted to talk about, just piggybacking off that particular topic. I forgot what I was gonna say. Okay. Go ahead. I Let's get it. I really lost. <laughs> um, the Grammy deadline is approaching. Uh huh. Um, can you tell us about how the Grammys work? I know you could break that down for us. Well, I, I know a little bit about how it works. I just know that uh, you have to be a voting member. You have to have a certain amount of credit, and you're a voting member. I think the Grammys matter so much because it's the one award that's given to you by your peers. Oh, never knew that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the Billboard Awards is based on stats. But the Grammy Awards is based on like your peers. So shout out to my boy Henny. He's the president of the Atlanta chapter. So, you know, you become a voting member and there it is. Are we as black people still submitting to the Grammys? Do we care about Grammys? Like well, where we I, as a I culture? don't speak for black people. For the I, culture. Let's no, speak. I'm saying I don't speak for black people or the culture. Uh I speak for myself. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I don't have a problem with the Grammys. You know, I fuck with Harvey. Uh, I used to work at the publishing company that signed him. So I fought with Harvey Mason and Henny is my family. So I don't have a problem with the Grammys. I, this is my thing. If you have a problem, ignore it. One of the laws of power is to disdain things you cannot have. I don't even give it something credit if it's something that I don't acknowledge or I don't want. So I personally have don't have an issue with the Grammys, but I, I, I rarely have an issue with anything. That's true. I'm like, I understand everybody's position. That's my problem, so I always try to see both sides. But what are your predictions for the Grammys? Uh, I don't know. I would just hope that... I think Beyonce is going to win big. Mm-hmm. And I just hope that Tehran gets nominated for Songwriter of the Year and oh, wins. Oh, I would, I would lose my Yeah, that's, that's my only... That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't have that much... I don't have... I don't invest that much time. Because I think all award shows have some political uh, uh, play to it, for lack of better words. I think all political shows have some political shit to it. So... Um, you know, some people win Grammys because they're out here really, really campaigning to be nominated. You know what I mean? Like, you know, they'll be like, yo, Tamira, we need her to be best new artist. So let's do this. Let's put her here. Let's put her here with the hopes of doing it. So I'm not really the campaign type. Like, I'm not really like the, I'm the like, either you fuck with what I'm doing or you don't type, you know, but I know some people care about stuff like that. So for those people, it's valid. I want Tehran to win. You know, but I'm not gonna like show up and like do a song and dance with the hopes that he went out. I hope that he wins based on his merits and that he deserves it. You know, but shit, somebody is what, what the reason why I would say that is because you might will be willing to go zero to a hundred, but it's one person who's willing to sell their whole soul, their kid's soul, and everything for it. And I'm not willing to go that far for something that is just like, you know, another chip on my shoulder. Another, you know, another notch under my belt rather. You said you thought Beyonce was gonna win big this year. I think her album is fire. Love it. It's like my gym playlist. Anywho, speaking of Beyonce, Latoya Luck is said that she lost her confidence 
um, while she was singing next to Beyonce and Destiny's Child. I just want y'all to know that. I never know what Tamira's going to ask. By the way, you're amazing. Thank you. But I want y'all to understand, I literally, will, I, my office is across the way. I'll be in my office working and I'll come in here with no idea what Tamira's going to ask me. And she just hits me with shit. And I'm just looking at her like, God damn. So hold on. So go ahead. Okay, so Latoya Luckett recently got interviewed and she said that she lost her confidence okay. while singing next to Beyonce and Destiny's Child. She was around 12 at the time and she was trying to decipher, like, is she just different than me or is she better than me? So I would ask you, like, what advice would you give people? Well, comparison is the joy, the thief of joy. So yep. let's start there. But aside from that, what advice would you have given 12-year-old Latoya Luckett? Run your race. Um... I, it's weird because, you know, I can imagine, you know, Beyonce's father and mother was involved with developing them. So, like, just look at it from this standpoint. If Destiny's Child was being developed, let's say 40 hours a week, right? That was Destiny's Child being developed, right? Beyonce had the other 40 hours at home. She was being developed every being. So when Toya probably went home, Beyonce was still being developed. Obviously, look at her sister, Salon. She's a star, too. So... I understand where she's coming from, but sometimes you gotta just look at like what people have and what people don't have. Beyonce had a coach with her every step of the way. Latoya was being coached, so she probably was being coached at home differently. You know what I mean? Like some some people are like, I don't care about that. You need to be happy. And some people are like, fuck happiness, we here to win. You know, so I could see why she felt that way. But I mean, that's just, you know, the circumstances you was in you know what I mean like sometimes I see people and I'm like damn I wish I had uh, uh, my parents or my family invested those things in me that they did in this guy but that's also was my motivation because I didn't have that so I worked harder so you know some people see things as, as, as problems and I think winners see things as challenges so maybe she saw it as a problem and I would just tell her look at it as a challenge people love being challenged at least winners do like the goal, like to set a goal in. Yeah. Speaking of challenges, did you know Pusha T and Lil Wayne had beef back in the day? Uh, I think so, a little bit. Pusha's had beef with a lot of people. I fuck with Pusha. He hard, but he, I, Pusha is like, he's like a rap bully, sniper. He just feels like, and I don't think it's like malicious. Like fuck these guys. I just think it's like this shit is a sport to me. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's like if you go on the basketball court, like you want to take on the best. You don't want to just win. You want to win against the absolute best. So that's what I would say. It's crazy that you compared it to a sports reference because that's how little Wayne kind of referenced their beef. He said, I was hit sideline. Like, I didn't even know we had this type of beef. And then he just went with it. Anyway, the good news is that they're starting an NFL commercial, which shocked fans and like really made a lot of people happy. So my question to you is, do you think that more people in our culture should be able to put beef aside to come together and kind of get to the bag? Sometimes, I mean, 50 Cent whole career was fueled by beef. 50 Cent is like the king. No, I'm just saying, I'm just saying some people are fueled by competition. Mm -hmm. um, some people are fueled by, you know, just the, the idea of going against somebody. So I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. I would just say that, you know, 50 Cent, you know, I mean, I don't know. As long as it's rap beef, I'm cool. As long as it's, but when it's street beef, I'm not for that. If it's like, I got a problem with you and we're going to keep it on wax, cool. And I think they got to also send a message to the world that we're going to keep it on wax because Tupac wasn't killed by Biggie. Right. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like Biggie killed him and Biggie wasn't killed by Tupac physically. It was people who were felt fueled by the fire who wanted to be a part of it. It's like me and another guy can have a problem and me and him can be like very level-headed, intelligent, smart, who understands how to sit down and talk about it. But it's a young dude that's like, man, I'm about to show Ray I'm a real soldier. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, it's wild. So that's why it's like, it's a fine line. But as long as everybody understands, like, you know, we about to do this, then I think it's great. I think it's great if it's respectable and it's on wax. That's what I would say about rap beat. Snoop Dogg's son is writing for him now. He says that his son gives him insight of things that he can't see. How do you feel about that? Amazing. I love nepotism. I welcome nepotism. Literally the definition of nepotism. I wish yeah. that 
I had access to it. <laughs> but that would be fucked up for me to say that's wrong when my son is going to have certain legs up because he's my son. So, nah, I think it's amazing. Man, I think it's great, man. Listen, we don't have no heritage in our community. We don't have enough of it, right? We don't have, like, we don't have six generations of wealth in the black community like some of these other races do. So, Snoop is building a whole new uh, uh, family of royalty and his kids should benefit, his daughter should benefit, and his grandkids should benefit. What the fuck are we doing it for? Agreed. NLE Chopper, you worked for him before, right? I signed him. I think you have a plaque in your office. I signed him. Yeah, I've seen that. He tweeted and he said, by nature, men are going to cheat. It's literally in our DNA. Men are here to procreate. That doesn't mean he doesn't love you. He's just doing what he was designed <laughs> to do. Look at Bryce. Okay. Is that a true statement? When I was 19, I thought that way too. How old is he? 19. I think oh, he'd be 20 in what? November. When I was 19, I thought that way too. What were you doing at 19? Nothing. Uh, thinking that it was okay for a man to have whatever he <laughs> want, doing it and chasing it. Speaking of that, Ray J also said strippers and prostitutes don't count as cheating. Ray J is a marketing genius. What Ray J knows how to say stuff to make people care. He's smart enough to know that that shit is the same shit. Come on, that's like that's like if his woman cheated on him with a stripper. She said, that don't count. That counts. Come on, Ray, like Ray J. But Ray J, he's one of the geniuses out here. Like, Ray J is one of... There are artists out here that are bigger than their music, right? There's some artists who's like, man, their profile feels bigger than their music. Then there's some artists who music feels bigger than them, right? Ray J is one of those artists that he's 100 times bigger than his music. Probably has like like three real one wish. The one with little. Wait a minute. But think about it. How many people have two records from that era that are still around making money he's making? That's because he's a genius. That's because he is bigger than his music. So he understands how to make people care. I love it. I fuck with Ray J. Shout out to Billy J as manager. That's my people. Do celebrities deserve privacy? No. Somewhat yes and no. I think yes and no. When you signed up to be a celebrity, let's look at the core word of the word celebrity. Celebrity, the core word of it is celebrated. You want to be celebrated by people. If that is something that comes with the territory, you have no privacy. And people have a, people celebrate you, so that means people have an interest in you. People's interest in you make people follow you, look into you, and care about stuff. There was a hundred fights in elevators. But when Beyonce and Solange, when Solange and Jay did it, it was the breaking news. Why? Because of our interest in that family. You can't have privacy. It's unfair. I'm not saying it's right, but I'm saying it's like me doing a podcast and then saying, I'm going to get on here and talk all the shit I want. And I don't want anybody to say anything back to me. It's like, bro, I'm talking. That deserves a response. I might think it's stupid. I, I argue with people all day on Instagram. And I argue with people all day. And they don't make no sense to me. Like in the comments? Or? Yeah, we argue. I go back and forth. I go back and forth with you. Oh, me too. I like, that. I don't even know but, how to stop but, but for me, I that's what I'm saying. Like, I do it up until this point. There's probably going to get to a point where I'm not going to do it. Like, if I was at Cardi P stage in the podcast world, I'm like, the Cardi B podcast, I'm not responding to nobody. Because at that point, my mental health is going to, like, kick in. By the way, mental health is great because you can use that for any excuse. I can, like, do anything and say it's my mental health. <laughs> like I could like do anything and we could say I meant my mental health there was a point in time where they would just say that nigga's crazy mm -hmm. <laughs> and you knew to stay away from him nah. you knew not to mess with him you knew when he was crossing the street you know when he was coming on your street you cross the street right. now it's just he has mental health issues it feels so much gentle mm -hmm. whoever, whoever created the term mental health shout out to you <laughs> shout out to you because you gave a lot of people a uh, 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 grace that word gave grace. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask Ray one of these questions and he's going to kill me for it. No, ask me anything. I don't mind. What's the best sampled song of all time? Oh, my God. First thing pops in my head is More Money, More Problems. Um, Fire sample. Uh, people might not agree with me, but... Tory Lane say it. Good one. My God, you gonna have to do more than just what? Like that was 
that to me is like the last 10 years, that's the core. Like you can't, that's like the, the that is like the level that everyone wants to get on. That's like that. But um, more money, more problems, probably. Yeah, because that was definitely probably the best sampled record, I would say, in hip hop history, at least to me. You know What'd what you I, say? I have no clue. The, what I think, and I just made the question. Um, no, but you had to write the question <laughs> yeah. down and something pops in your head. Give me what pops in your head. I knew you were going to do this. I literally Googled sample songs. Give me just a song it. that you think. You from Harlem. So you gave me... you. I'm, I know, but I give me one. Give me, uh, all, the Harlem, Puff and Mace. Wait, let Era me say was, something else before we get on me about that one. Um... We, no, we didn't get a sound, so I had. Oh, cool. That's not fair. Don't do that to me. Um, what I think is smart about samples, it kind of bridge two generations, right? So Agreed. it's like it gives me the nostalgic feeling, feeling, excuse me, of like being back and I'm coming out days. But if somebody remixes it, what's the song that Diddy Son just remixed? Can't stop, won't stop. Yeah, people. No, he, he sampled um, Crush on You. Bum yeah, up. and people are pissed bum about that. They're like, why would you bum. let your son mess up? Nepotism is real. I think it's a pretty good song, but it, it brings back to that day, and then the new kids get this. So it's it's building. Thing is amazing. I think I think we should. Generation. I think there should be more sampling. I feel like they every gave empire us- was built on sampling. Give me an example. Dr. Dre Chronic album. Mm-hmm. That was P Funk. Dun dun and let me ride. Like that was all sample. That I think I think nothing but a G thing was a sample. Everybody's yeah. agreeing with you. Yeah, I think nothing but a G thing was a sample. But you crazy, like, like samples have built empires. Death Row was built on samples. Bad Boy was built on samples. Irv Gotti and Murder Inc. was built on samples. We will not speak of Irv Gotti. On okay. The show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> last question. Can a woman's career be overshadowed by who she's dating? I didn't even say anything. Can a woman's career, I think, I think now in the era we live in, people have more interest in the lifestyle than they do than what the person actually does. Like, no disrespect to this person, because I, I think one of my friends managed her. But I know it, who you about to say. Who I'm about to say. Say it. Sweetie. No, not oh, sweetie. Okay. Sweetie. I, sweetie is known for something. We got introduced to Sweetie being a rapper. I was going to say Karuchi. Like, there's no way she should be famous, you know? But we, but she was dated someone famous, now she's famous. Mm-hmm. Like, there was a time when you had to have talent or had to be known for something to be something, but because of social media and the interest of the celebrity, like, I think there's a, a, a page on Instagram that has millions of followers that's a, that's a parody page of Kanye's daughter. Yes, it's a parody page. It has followers like a motherfucker. That's my North point. North is funny as hell. Though. But this is my point. My point is this, is that in the world we live in, the, there is an interest in everything. Now we have access to too much information. There was a point in the time where we had 13 channels. And if you lived in your city, you had two urban radio stations and that was it. And then we got cable and then we had MTV and BET. And if you were big and you were black, you were on MTV, right? If you were... Black, you was on BT automatically. Like there were times where all we can look at was what you allowed us to have, mm. right? Nowadays, everybody has a phone, everybody has social media, so everything that you are matters. So, yes, artists and their girlfriends matter. Yes, there. Are, and here's the crazy part: there are couples who are bigger because they are couples. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Like why do we know why do like why do we know John Legend's wife? We, why would we know her? We know her from John. I think she was a supermodel though. But here's the crazy thing. Oh, I'll give crazy you a prime example. No, she is she was she was a supermodel. She was a supermodel, but this is my thing. I don't know any supermodels. Right. If you told me to name any supermodel, I don't know them. I'm pretty sure in that world, everybody knows you. But mm-hmm. in my world, I don't know supermodel, but I know John Legend, so I know he's dating. Uh um there, there are plenty of couples like that. Like I give you a great example, Russell Wilson and Sierra. Shout out to Sierra. I've been on since she was a little girl. Russell Sierra. Like, there were people who had no idea who Russell was. Stu won a Super Bowl. Stu's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. He's incredible. But there were people who didn't know who he was. There were people who literally called him Sierra's husband. Right? But then there were also people in his world that had no idea who she was. 
that was like, who's he dating? She's a singer. She's one of those things. You know what I'm trying to say? So I think that a lot of the times it's just worlds crossing and it's like my fan base is behind me, your fan base behind you. And they looking at you like, who is, that's who we with? Okay, let me check them out. Let me look at them. And then your fan base is like, that's who we with? Okay, let me, it's the same thing. So for me, I feel like there is an interest in relationships more than ever because we have so much access. And I feel like now we live in a time where everybody wants to be seen and heard and cared about, right? So if you are a wife and you love Denzel Washington, well, Denzel's older now, but nobody really knew about who his wife was or what she did or she don't have a social pro profile. You know, she was like a wife and a mother. But the new Denzel, Lori Harvey, when she's dating Michael Jordan, like she's a brand now. If Denzel Washington and his wife just started today, his wife would be a brand in today's world. Back then she was a wife, but I think that becomes from people having such an interest and in people that they can relate to. I think it's also inspiring people like, like little babies, baby mother Jada, she's like a big brand now. Ariana Fletcher is a big brand now. So I think like, for me, it's, it's having a negative effect a little bit. Like people whose goals now is to be rappers, baby moms. Yeah. Boo. I, did, I didn't know none of the rappers, baby mothers when I was growing up. Yeah. I had no clue who Fat Joe's wife was or exactly but, anything like that. Uh, I didn't do it. Women did. I'm blaming. I have no. Women. I have no interest in who anyone is dating. I have a rule in my house. We don't talk about celebrities. Don't say her name in my house. Don't say that name in my house. Just because I work with actual talent. So the people that I work with, and it might be snobbish of me. I'm not gonna lie. But the people that I work with that we acknowledge are people who are chasing greatness. Not somebody who just fucked with a rapper. And now we're like, oh, let's hear her name. I hate that we even said a name. Don't even say a name here. Because that to me, it's like we just fell into the hole of what this world is. I, I just don't buy into that. I like people that actually chase greatness, not people who fuck greatness. And feel like they are, you know, like, and a lot of these people feel like, you know, and it's like success is now the new STD. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, because I know I'm being honest with you, because all of a sudden, because I'm laying down with someone successful, I caught what they caught. Nah, nah. And we're fucking it up for everybody right now, because now people are striving to be nothing more than seen by someone rather than being seen for something. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's not cool. Like, it's like me. I manage people. I manage, I've had a lot of success since we've been on the show. Have you guys heard me talk about my success? Because I'm still Ray. Even when I try to get you to. I know, me. I'm still, I am still who I am. If you're not interested in me for me, then I damn sure don't want you interested in me for who I manage. Mm, I true. want you to fuck with me because of who I am, not because of who I manage. Because that's a whole nother ecosystem, a whole nother world. So my thing is, is that I'm not, and like I said, this is just how I see it. I'm not, I don't, I don't think success is an STD. I think success is earned. And I think we're really hurting young people by making it seem like all oh, you gotta do is sleep with a rapper, get a BBL, and now you're famous. That's scary to me. It's people, it's just like selling their souls. That might be the most, you know, antique shit I've ever said on here, but <laughs> I have a daughter. And it's very important to me that my daughter knows that she is someone. She is not the someone she's dating. You are fucking you. You are fucking princess, period. And the person you're dating is gonna treat you as such. And you're still gonna be known for something. Right? It's like look at the queen. What's up? What's the name? Princess Diana. They when you are a real princess and you dealing with a real boss, you got a job to the community. Think about that. Like when you're the first lady, like Michelle, you're the first lady. What is your agenda? My agenda is gonna be showing young girls. Da da da. Perfect. I love that. Your husband's a president. You're gonna be out here doing this community work. These girls just be like, yeah, I'm fucking him and what? And this is me and this is my brand and you want me to show up. And it's like, bro, we are really fucking up the world. It's just telling y'all 30 years from now, people are going to be like, I just want to be a rapper's girlfriend. Shit, not even 30, maybe five. I just want to date a rapper. He going to be beating your ass. You don't care. But I'm dating him. Come on, man. That's really how it goes. I'm sorry, Braxton's looking like I'm saying some controversy. So I'm going to just... Just be quiet right now. All right. Well, once again, thank you for sitting down with me. It's always a pleasure. Appreciate you. Oh, that's it? Yeah, no, I'm not. Braxton was like, wrap up, wrap up. <laughs> 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 now I'm just talking shit. All right, let's go. Bye. Peace